Moving to oneness. Nourishing curiosity. Embracing differences. Becoming one. is really uh, the final year of this chaotic time where we are being put into a wash machine <laughs> and cleansed and nature is doing that to itself, right? Our whole cosmos is making sure we're moving into our optimal being in our optimal state. And that's how the new year starts. For some of us, you, some of you are going to have it a little later in your new year, but it's not going to stop as predicted for thousands of years. 2022 is going to be the final of the last or of the three chaotic years that is putting all of us into a washing machine <laughs> and nature at the same time, somehow we're all getting tumbled around to be able to look at many things anew and weather is playing with us. So, hello everyone, I'm Mylene Elke, your host of the Moving to Oneness show. And today I'm in Germany and it's warm like spring outside and my roses have sprouted their leaves. This is amazing. Not that I'm in a region anyway that it's so cold normally that we have meters of snow. I think I haven't really seen meters of snow in Germany since I was a little girl in my region. You have to go into the Alps and there you have to be lucky at this time. Normally the snow comes a little later. I did hear many stories when I was young of the older generation and they spoke about meters and meters of high snow where they could jump out into the snow with their skis and uh, out of the first floor and have a fun afternoon. So that hasn't been. We did have snow as I mentioned end of November, beginning of December a little bit which is very uncommon as well and many other places in this world and uh, so there's in other places it's very warm we've been warmer in germany than a lovely place i love to go in italy this is also a little bit of an oxymoron but you know i don't want to talk too much about the weather today but to celebrate what is coming to celebrate what all of us have dedicated our life to to and bring a new vibrancy into our lives, to bring new vibrancy into nature, to bring new vibrancy into our relationships, into our creations, in to our personal lives. We have been also quiet, I felt, the last decade. There was not enough excitement, you know. So we're getting out of that this year, this like the trot, like the, you know, going on every day doing the same thing. And that has been more emphasized, right? Because we were in many places more alone now, even though we had this festive times, which is really a time to get together with family and friends to be more contemplative, right? Times of a lot of candles are lit, a lot of lamps nowadays for example here in germany you find less and less candles on the trees christmas trees if you have one more of those light bulbs now and it is the time where we celebrate rituals we don't have so many left 
And these are some really ancient ones in many cultures or religions, right? So this time period brought up the reflection of what was, maybe of what should be again, what we have lost, what rituals, what ceremonies, what connections do you want to bring back into your life that nourish you, that fulfill you, that enlighten you, brighten you up? My whole body is moving upwards and straight. I'm sitting now in a way really expanded as I'm talking to you now. And the chest comes out. So also for you to look straight ahead that your eyes are, you know, not bent down anymore. So that means we are looking ahead with anticipation and a joy and an adventure and a curiosity. You're also exposing your chest. The time of pulling together your shoulders, folding in in front of you, have stopped. And many of you may feel this. And that's what we've worked forward to or toward to, right? And you're helping your clients or you're doing it in the background. You're helping your children maybe with that yeah to remind them what a beautiful being they are and i remind you what a beautiful fascinating being you are and so why are we going through these changes in nature as well right because it is also there not that normal trot the normal what we expect the expectations have been switched yeah, and this is fun. This creates again a conversation, a discourse, a vibrancy. And also at the same time, we look how it should be, how was it? And we don't have temperature writings that really go further back than uh, 110 years or something like this, right? Luckily, we are coming, the scientists or the science are providing instruments where we can understand what was prior right by reading the ground so how has it been many hundred years and thousands of years ago our weather and what is this change bringing us now it's going to be really interesting it also supports us and see where have we closed our eyes on what topics especially be about landscape and nature as a landscape architect right my heart bleeds if I hear discussions where only the politicians are blamed and people don't go into action. And I think that's what we're asked to do, right? If I say there's not enough trees and we shouldn't cut them down, then I say, or well, I should do, go and plant some seeds go plant some trees, organize or provide money to others that do this work. And you can start wherever, right? I can start in my backyard. I can, yeah, there was this young man, and now he's not young anymore, but when I was in college, I really love that he's a, he was also a student of my university. And he went out in Atlanta and just in the center of the street, I, don't, I forgot the name now in English, I knew it once, he would plant trees because the city wouldn't. They wouldn't think it was appropriate. And he, every Saturday or every month, there was a Saturday where he organized trees. He got funds for it. People donated their time or their money to support him in planting and also watching it for a while until the, the root system was established and the tree could flourish by itself. Now, if you look back, there was... I was in my 20s. He did that already. And I just saw recently a, a newspaper article, a magazine article, where we, he had now helped communities build gardens and he had replenished whole areas. And so you can see how one person can provide change. Yeah. And also there that we take the time to look how did things originally thrive in your area where you live, right? How 
in your ecosystem, in your climate zone, and that we don't use the systems that were, you know, brought from a northern climate maybe into a southern. You have to work totally different. And so that I invite you also maybe if you want to, to go and dig up or ask questions and now with so many podcasters out there and microphones ask your elderly or what do they remember from old legends old stories how were things planted what plants grew with each other somewhere which plants needed each other this becomes so important now because there's too much i believe monoculture right so and do something with your children or your friends. And it's a celebration of being together and giving something back. This is the whole idea of that I think we have lost a little bit because we have been separated so much of nature on purpose, right? We've been put into these little rooms around the planet that separate us from the energies of outside of nature in many cultures when you take something from nature you also give something back as an exchange a thank you right it doesn't have to be an expected one it can come from the heart it can come from your own creativity it can be something new it can be something you feel comfortable with doing whatever you're able to do, right? So this is important for me for this 22. What can I do? What can you do? What can we do to improve our daily life in a simple way? To be more aware of an exchange, right? As I have spoken so often about anything in our house is medicine anything outdoors is medicine for us and that we go through life now acknowledging this exchange a plant that you see a flower the sun that you see right the saying thank you or the gratitude but also the curata uh, <laughs> the curiosity of what are you bringing me what are you teaching me and what can i teach you you're as important as everything else existing. So if 22 is the year where everyone gets a deep, deep, deep understanding of that and finds a way to express that. <laughs> and I just heard the birds outside. I had to take a break here recording the broadcast, uh, the podcast, because my cat wanted to get outside. So I left the door open. I was so funny right because I was just <laughs> there the birds chirping and saying that we're so separate if we have these closed walls and doors some of you are lucky you have architecture with huge windows that you can open or no windows if you live in a more tropical setting but even there can this be a year of creating new architecture of how should we live so we can be more flexible, more movable. The ideas of architecture, are they overhauled? Can we go back to more sustainable? I don't know what, but you know, so much architecture when it was not used anymore could go back to nature, right? It could vanish so really no footprint was left are we going this way in 22 i think yes because if we all talk and desire this enlightenment we're the action takers of the enlightenment it's not just gonna come down on us and say boom right it's hard work it's going back to raising the vibration within ourselves supporting by our vibration, keeping that raised, others can synchronize to it, right? Then they can stay in a higher vibration. Then also we understand nature better, that is in a much higher vibration than we are, right? And we can become part of the chorus of the one 
the oneness we so deeply desire. <laughs> because within less than eight years, we will be in this peaceful state. So whatever comes now toward you, acknowledge it and know it is here to be looked at, to be understood, maybe to be changed or to be widened, to be broadened, to be lived more or to live, be lived less. And what is important information in our lives? What is important for you? What is important in my life? Is my life really full? Do I really spend the optimal time in my optimal way with my family, with my friends? What am I not living yet? So these are the questions to be uh, pulled out a little more out of all of us, out of me, out of you. And we have support, right? We have the whole cosmos, all beings, nature and our friends, right? So share a little bit about you and then celebrate it. Because I love to celebrate. Because it's important that we celebrate. Because when you feel light and you have fun, your body feels vigorous, then it's easy to do all these new actions, to try out new things, to be adventurous, to travel the world, to stand up as you are, to walk in your rhythm, in your stride that suits you with your swagger, right? With a swing in your hips, with a little jump in your step. <laughs> I just had, we over New Year's, I played with my husband and my son a few games where we looked at a video, heard it, remembered the, the, the song, right? And then put it into a, a different genre of music. And there came up a Saturday Night Live, because everyone knows disco, right? The movements from that movie. <laughs> but as we were looking up that a title, that dance, there was some cuts out of the movie or, or trailer where you could see John Travolta, I forgot the name of his character, but they were walking with a little fun in their step, in their stride. And I thought, oh my God, we don't do that enough. Yeah, to have the little swing, the little nah, and we've lost it. So I invite you and invite your family, invite your kids to bring that little swing back that we as a culture, that we as humans have that when we walk this earth. Yeah, when we touch the ground, that we feel it, but that we play with the surface below our feet. And when you reach out into the sky, that you reach out far and touch the stars, the clouds, the sun, the birds, and feel their energy. <laughs> this strong relationship, I, I can feel it now. It's, it's this invigorating relationship we're building up to ourselves as we're building it up to anything. <laughs> right in front of me is this beautiful tree. It's so soft. And it's here to nourish me and brighten my face. I smile all day when I look at this beautiful tree. Came into my house to be with me and my family. And I'll put him then on next week onto the patio and he'll be there till May. I have my trees a long time <laughs> in my uh, zone and my closeness. But guess it's a communication. There's so much teaching going on. So much learning going on. And not teaching by putting information down our throat. Sorry, that's mostly how it is in our schools, right? Uh, but through the curiosity of understanding each other. This will bring change quickly. And yes, there's going to be a little washing again. I'm going to come back, the little tumbling. But you know, as in the washing machine, there comes the rinse. So everything is brought up to the surface, then washed off and rinsed off. And then you come a little out wet. 
yeah, but it's a refreshing wet. When you come like out of the bath or you come out of the lake or you come out of the ocean, there is this tingling, this excitement within you. And then you dry and suddenly you're the new you. Or the newness or let's say whatever is not needed in your life disappeared or is disappearing. So concentrate on this set humongous goals. Now goals is not the word, but dream big, dream huge, dream the unfathomed, really dream up what you love to do, what you desiring and you have not been able maybe to get to or feel comfortable to live. Now do it. Yeah. And again, so many others are here for you. <laughs> the birds right that moment again. They're here for us too. So do know you're not alone in this. What are we celebrating on this podcast? The oneness of you and the oneness of you within and to everything existing. You're an integral part. So show all of those parts to me, to us, to yourself and hone in to the things that you love to do, the things you love to be or the being you love to be. And there are the little children laughing, right? Bring that laughter in. What makes you laugh? What brings you joy? What doesn't? Just, you know, slowly transform it or fast, whatever your style is. Again, yeah, we're so unique. We have our own way. And dream up again how you envision life, how you envision the world, us acting with each other, communicating with each other, hugging each other seeing each other, embracing each other, hearing each other, kissing each other. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Touching, embracing. Who have you not embraced enough? Do you want to embrace? Did you tell others that you want to be embraced or hugged, kissed, touched, stroked, right? Of your friends, of your family. So, can we get this tactileness back into our life? The touching of other objects, of plants, beginning again to sensitize our feelings. I remember my chiropractor, she once told me that they learn to feel, right? So they start off, and that's a beautiful test too, or exercise, I should say. They put a hair under a piece of paper. And you can feel it, right? But then they put another piece on it and try to f sense where it is. Now it becomes a little bit more difficult to feel, you know, where you go a little higher, where the rise is. Third, fourth, fifth, she went up to 17 pages on top of a hair. That's learnable. You can practice that. So you start feeling deeper. Yeah, as I'm sitting now inside here, I feel the breeze that comes in. It's just a very light hint of air. For example, touching my feet, my hands, my face. Yeah, how do you hear? Or going into places and concentrating on what you hear, how much, how far. And maybe go into quieter places in nature and try it again. How much do you hear then? What kinds of crackles do you hear? Do you hear and feel below you on the ground? Do you even feel the worms in a way moving through the earth below you when you sit on the grass or in the forest? Yeah. Can we go back to that sense sensation, this scenting, this, <laughs> this feeling and it will release this numbness and will bring 
newness, right? Because that is a physical newness. And now that I believe is so important that we can touch it and feel it on our own body. And it's not just in the mind. It's not just a theory. And that will support us then and support you and me in detecting what information comes that is our own, right? So we can walk our own knowledge here on this planet now. And the more of us, the more of you, the more I hone into myself, the better we treat ourselves, each other, and the world. This is going to be a great year. And also it strengthens you. And not strong like you have to be ultra strong, but you will get stronger just through that because you become aware where you tighten or what parts of your body are not keeping your eyes ahead, right? Or your chest showing to the world or um, it will show where you cannot relax fully enough. So again, you will notice many things and you will bring it into harmony. You will bring it into balance. I sense more and more of doing it. The younger ones are doing it already. <laughs> Go listen to them. They're very quiet about it. They barely speak about it. But they're acting. So let us support them by unlearning what has tightened us and relearning who we are, what we are, who I am, what I am, what you are. And what you desire. And as you can hear, we have the world out there supporting us. The birds especially, the wind, the trees, the stars, the sun, the clouds, the moon. All of you. <laughs> you can create so much beauty. You, can, you are so beautiful. I want to celebrate this now with you. Oida hao liana monu manda yanda wo nyu munda na yo mana la liana o nyu la la ya mama nyu mai yo mana la na na ya la 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 ni 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 bum ya ni 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 na nu nu ni 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 Nyu <laughs> Mumbalania, Numbalania, Numbola, do do, Nyala, Mobwinda, La la la, Mumwinda, La la la, Mumwinda, La mumumu, Nya mumwanya, Lelelelenya, Mumumwanya, Lelelelenya, Mananananalindo, Mananananalenya, Mamadanandu. Mamma
<laughs> that was fun. This is the year to have fun, to be fun, to bring fun. When you're you, when I am me, we are us. There's only fun. Create fun. Be it. Be it. Be it. <laughs> wow, we're going to create magic on this planet. In your life. In our life. My life. I feel the tingle, the curiosity, the magic that is arising, the sparkle of 2022. It is up to us to keep that sparkle sparkling even brighter. And we're able to. You're able to. I'm able to. So let's do it. <laughs> I'm Eileen, your host of the Moving to Wonders podcast. And I love this first show of 2022 and I wish you the best. Have fun, be you, dance, sing, paint, cook, whatever you desire and bring it into this world. Do materialize your dream. Bye bye.